This time so close to Christmas. Thank you so much and a very good evening to our viewers back home. First up, congratulations to you and the rest of your team for, for putting this together. Something for South African fans to celebrate, a win at the Kosafa Cup. Yeah, no, it was a great win. Well done to the boys and the entire staff. You know, it was a collective effort and uh, yeah, we are happy. Uh, we obviously in a process, you know, as SAFA and national teams and this was part of uh, our progress in our process because we want to qualify for the next under 20 World Cup and of course we want to qualify for the 2020 Olympics in Japan. So yes, we are happy with the progress. One of the first questions that comes up is how you got it right this time around because it's been a struggle. Look, well, we, we chose a balanced site. Uh, we knew what we were looking for. We were clear uh, with our philosophy. We had a good uh, backup staff. Helman Kelele played a huge role. Uh, Lucky Shiburi and Tiro Van Royen, the analyst. So yes, hence we're saying we had the right staff. We had the right balance squad. Uh, good balance between uh, experienced players, the captain, Tendo Mukumele, and of course the new young ones, Lyle Fosters and... Uh, Bradley Cross. Let's talk a little bit about some of the detail. Uh, you and Group B alongside Mozambique, Mauritius, as well as Egypt, who were guests, and you played them twice and beat them twice in the tournament. Now, beating Egypt at any tournament is always a big deal. Can you tell us a little bit about how it was to beat such a competitive side like Egypt? Yeah, no, it was obviously very tough. Uh, the North Africans are very tough, strong mentality, dominating aerial balls, and uh, yeah. We had a clear plan, we were well prepared, uh, our boys were well drilled for the match and yeah, we, we did well by beating them because it's very important that we close the gap between uh, uh, the southern region and the North African countries so that we can fast track our talented players and so that we can improve the image of our national teams as well. You talk about our talented players. Uh, so talented, in fact, it was a group that you had, that we had the leading uh, goal scorer in the tournament. We also had uh, the player of the tournament uh, in, that, in that mix. How do we build from that success going forward? Because that's the one thing that comes up all the time, that we know we've got talent. It shows in the age group tournaments, uh, but we seem to struggle in translating that into senior. How do we build with what you had? Yeah, what is key, it's obviously a good synergy between clubs. That's where the players belong. And of course, the national teams. It's important that uh, clubs always cooperate in terms of releasing players. And uh, they really cooperated this time, and we are grateful and thankful for that. And yes, uh, it's a continuous process. We need to continue giving life skills to the young lads on our side. And of course, the clubs should do the same. And even the other stakeholders the media and of course the parents and the schools just to make sure that we, we produce a rounded product that can be able to play for Bafana in the near future. I like the fact that you bring up uh, giving them life skills. Uh, that's what seems to be one of the, the key components of, of making our players get from just having raw talent to being successful career footballers even beyond their careers. Uh, tell us a little bit about the life skills you're referring to. It's about reminding them of our former heroes, uh, tell them the story about our 96 victory, tell them about the Sean Butlers, and they were very fortunate that Mkelele is with them every day just to continue with life skills, you know, remind them about why they're playing football, goal setting, medium, long term, short term. So yes, it's key because uh, once you don't have uh, a humble, uh, teachable player, then you'll have a problem to maximize their talent. So we just felt it's key that we prioritize more on life skills so that they can be able to be teachable footballers. Uh, one of the things that uh, Stuart Baxter uh, said very recently was that uh, today's PSL players seem to have less hunger for success greater than what's in front of them than PSL players of yesteryear. What do you have to say about that comment? Well, there's obviously, I think, uh, many factors that can contribute to uh, poor performances of our young players, you know, uh, maybe a bit of uh, uh, a focus on the social media. I think players are spending a lot of time uh, doing things that they are not improving their technical skills. So more focus, more work in taking care of your body, maximizing your skills, and then there should be a chance for our players to become better than they are at the moment. One of the most popular additions to, um, to sporting sides has been the addition of a, a mentoring and sports psychology aspect. What is your take on that and where do you see it fitting in, if at all, in the groups that you work with? Yeah, of course, sports psychology is an important uh, tool in our modern sports. Uh, 
uh, with regard to performance. And yes, uh, it's about counselling. It's about one-on-one -on -one sessions with players. It's about giving feedback. It's about motivating the players. It's about uh, uh, teaching them, you know, about uh, or, or improving, uh, reminding them about their strengths. So yes, uh, we prioritise sports psychology a lot in terms of doing uh, our own team analysis mm -hmm. instead of maybe focusing more on the Egyptians, mm -hmm. just to work on the confidence of our own lads. And yes, a bit of feedback. Everybody needs feedback after a bit of activity or yes. after a bit of work. So yes, positive feedback. And uh, hence we are saying that uh, the staff uh, has been uh, very, very good in terms of helping us uh, to make sure that we achieve our goals. It looks like it's the work of the coach, but mm -hmm. uh, trust me, there's a lot of a good uh, experienced people that were involved behind the scenes. Coach Tabo, in the group that you are with right now at the Kosafa Cup, uh, did you have a sports psychologist as part of your team? A sports psychologist, we normally make sure that we have a meeting with them in our day one of the camp. So we don't really bring uh, the sports psychologist in our camp because mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the number of activities in a day, you know, because it's a football camp and mm -hmm. priority is the game. But uh, we always use sports psychologists to to equip the coaches as well, you mm -hmm. know, to, to, to help us and guide us in terms of uh, how to tweak them, you know, positively so that they always uh, remain in the right frame of mind, you know, which was, which was very key because the, 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 our secret was making sure that we focus more on the positive actions of our boys, mm -hmm. what they do in training, the good things, what they do in matches, and then we try to show them and encourage them to repeat those actions. Coach, I mean, we, we saw some fantastic uh, performances by, by these young boys uh, uh, at, at uh, the Kosafa Cup, that under-20 Kosafa Cup. How do we get that to translate into performances for regular performances for their PSL clubs, one? And two, uh, uh, the same level or even better for Bafana. How do we get that right? We've got about a minute or so, and I think it's, it's quite key that we get some of your ideas on this. Well, it's key that our respective PSL clubs continue to compete at CAF tournaments so that our players can get that international experience. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the PSL coaches have been doing a good job in terms of giving the young ones a chance. You know, mm -hmm. It's a process. They can't throw them all at the same time. The MDC League is playing a huge role. The ABC Municipal League is playing a huge role in terms of giving them playing minutes uh, at performance level. So we are on the right track and there is good progress and uh, in the long run we should have a bigger pool of young players competing at the higher level which is the PSL. Next up on your radar, uh, it's like, uh, obviously it's a very big uh, tournament that you need to qualify for. How are you preparing for that? Well, we, 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 we already have our camps in plans. Uh, March next year, yeah. we are going to North Africa to, uh, to play a tournament where Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco will be involved. Actually, the Egyptians invited us in this tournament just to be our guest team in the, from the southern region. So, yes, again, it's about giving our players international exposure and then wait to play the AFCON qualifiers after June, July. Mm -hmm. Yes, we come from the World Cup this year uh, in Korea. We did well. We learned a lot. And uh, we are looking forward, you know, to go to the World Cup again in two years so that we can be better. We are number 12 globally at the moment. Mm -hmm. We are number one in our region and we are number three in the continent. So we just need to be humble and then uh, try to repeat the good things and get, get rid of the bad things so that we can become better going forward. Coach Tabo, thank you so much for coming through. And uh, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. You've given us a Merry Christmas through your performances. And uh, thanks very much for that. Thank you so much and a Merry Christmas to our viewers and a happy 2018. Yes, sir. Now, there you have it, uh, Coach Tabo Sinong, uh, the coach of Amaji, uh, South Africa's under-20 uh, men's side, as well as assistant to Stuart Baxter at Bafana Bafana. Uh, there you had it. He was right here on Sports Live. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more.